This is a demonstration of exercise F1323, journalizing issuance of stock and preparing the stockholders e equity section of the balance sheet. The charter for ASAP TV Inc. authorizes the company to issue 100,000 shares of $5 no par preferred stock and 500,000 shares of common stock with $1 par value. During its startup phase, ASAP TV completed the following transactions, and the problem gives us in the requirements first to record the transactions in the general journal. So on September 6, ASAP TV issued 550 shares of common stock to the promoters who organized the corporation receiving cash of $16,000. $500. Now this was common stock and the problem told us that it had a $1 par value. So first we're going to multiply the number of shares, 550 times $1 par, and that will give us $550 that we will credit to common stock. The difference between the cash that was received, $16,500, and the $550 par or $15,950 will be credited to paid in capital in excess of par. So to record this entry, we would debit cash for $16,500. We would credit common stock for the $550 par value, and we would credit paid in capital in excess of par common for the difference or $15,950. On September 12th, the problem states that ASAP TV issued 400 shares of preferred stock for $23,000. So when we look at the problem, we see that the preferred stock did not have a par value. Now the $5 refers to the dividend that the preferred shareholders will receive. Remember that if a stock does not have a par value, then the entire amount that is received in exchange for the stock will be credited to legal capital, or in this case, preferred stock. So we would debit cash for 23000 and we would credit preferred stock for the same amount. And then it states that on September 14th that the company issued 1,500 shares of common stock in exchange for land with a market value of $17,000. So again, this is common stock, so we need to determine the amount that we would credit to common stock. So that's 1,500 shares times $1 par, or $1,500. Now the land was valued at $17,000, so that will be the amount that we will debit land for. So we will subtract the par value from the $17,000, and we'll get $15,500 for paid in capital in excess of par. So to record this transaction, we will debit land for 17,000. We will credit common stock for 1,500. And then we will credit paid in capital in excess of par common for $15,500. The second part of the problem states, prepare the stockholders equity section of the ASAP TV balance sheet at September 30, 2024 and assume that ASAP TV had net income of $38,000 for the month. So we're not going to prepare a full balance sheet, but we're only going to do the stockholders equity section. When you're preparing the stockholders e equity section, you start off with paid in capital. Now what, does, what is in paid in capital? Well, the legal capital or par value for the shares that you've issued and then paid in capital in excess of par common. When you do the stockholders equity section, you always start with preferred stock if the company has any preferred. And then we give just a small or short description of the, uh, in the case of a preferred stock, what the dividend is that it is no par, we had 100,000 shares authorized, and we have issued 400 shares and all of them are outstanding. So what does that actually mean? It just means that we've issued 400 shares and we don't have any in Treasury. We've not bought any of those back. So if we look at our T account, we've only had the one entry for preferred stock this month. If you remember, it was $23,000. So we will record that. It's all legal capital. 
for common stock we did have a par value as one dollar we had 500,000 shares authorized and we've issued 2,050 shares and we have all of those outstanding so we have no treasury stock for common for common stock remember we had $550 par on September 6 and $1,500 par on September 14 so our total balance in common stock is $2,050 we also had two entries that involved paid in capital in excess of par, $15,950 on September 6th and $1,500 on September 14th for a total of $31,450 in paid in capital in excess of par common. Now why do we separate these? Because most cor corporate law requires you to maintain the legal capital but you are allowed in certain instances to issue dividends out of paid in capital in excess of par, depending on what the laws are. Now when we add these three amounts together, we get total paid in capital of 56500 and then we would add to that our retained earnings. Since it's a brand new company, they didn't have any retained earnings at the beginning of the month, so $38,000 of net income would be the balance in retained earnings at the end of the month. So we have total stockholders equity at September 30th, 2024 of 94000 $500. And that is the conclusion of the demonstration for exercise F1323.